Good. All right. So uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Christian Laplante. Doesn't sound very Italian, but I'll tell you. It is Laplante, so it is Italian. I was born in Naples, Italy. I lived there till I was about 12 years old, and I came straight to Orlando. I didn't stop by New York. Everybody thinks that I stopped by New York or something, but I never did. I was actually there for about an hour to catch my flight to come here. Never went anywhere else. My dad was actually, the reason why I'm here is because my dad started working on Alfredo at Epcot. He was a server there for a very long time. So with me, I have two of my favorite Italian people. I have Angela back there. Hi. She's actually the assistant general manager of uh, the Il Molino restaurant. Oh. And then I have Serena Chow. Oh. Just spelled differently. Yeah. She is our relief manager, and she works in both uh, kimonos and sometimes in a molino, and pretty much all the outlets that we have here. Anybody who needs me. Yes, anybody who, who asks me. Fantastic. So the reason why we're all here, obviously, is to do it better in Italian. Well, in wine. Okay? Now, my wife always says it's better to do it with an Italian. But that's just her. So, the main goal for everyone is to just pay attention and make sure that we get to this right after we leave. <laughs> that is the number one rule, okay? So, we're just going to go through a few quick slides, tell you about some laws, tell you about some stuff that really is going to just hold up the drinking. Right. Yeah. That's all it's going okay? So, I'm going to try to move that quickly because everybody's like, oh, oh boy, I just want to. Okay, so yeah. let's go. So, what we're going to cover is just... A little something, you know, first Italy produces one quarter of the, of the wine that is sold in the world. Wow, one quarter. And it's not that big, so we're just going to concentrate on the areas. Now there's 20 regions, and we're only going to concentrate on the ones that actually make wine. So the ones that are make wine are going to be coming up in green, okay? So here we go. Oh, every single one of them make wine. So. We only have to go through 20 before we start drinking, don't worry. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're just going to concentrate on the three big ones, okay? So we're going to concentrate on Piedmont, Veneto, and Tuscany. I know some of you probably cheated, looked at your little thing in front of you and said, oh, yeah, only three. Six wines. That's okay. So we're going to start with, where do we start with, Angel? What's the first one? Piedmont. Piedmont. Okay, but we're not starting on Piedmont yet because we got to go still over the laws and label. So, just real quick, something that kind of helps out. We, we get wine, we look at the label, and we're like, oh, I'm confused. Why am I confused? Because there's some things on there that I don't understand. Some of them have a special name on top. Well, what to look on the label? We have the country of origin. Obviously, if you're looking at an Italian bottle, hopefully, it's from Italy. Uh, the quality level is actually something I'm going to explain just after this. It's the quality of the wine, which it's really confusing in Italian, so I'm going to make it quite as simple as possible. Uh, the percentage of alcohol, obviously, that is a law, so it has to be on there. Now, some, the way, the way that they make the wine will have actually higher alcohol content than others. So, and you'll actually have one, have one in front of you that is one of the highest ones that produces, okay? And now, we also have the vintage, obviously, and the winemaker. Now, Angela added this little thing on the bottom here. Because she said, you know what? Sometimes people don't understand, like, sec, demi-sec, dolce, amabile. That's the first time I ever heard that word. Amabile actually means amiable in Italian. So, I don't, I, mean, I guess it also means medium. This, I learned that today, actually. So, Angela, dry, what do you got over there? Secco. So that's usually the only thing that's secco in Italy is actually prosecco, which is the champagne of Italy, if you will. So um, when you are going shopping, these are just some keywords that you're going to look for when you're looking for labels on wines. If you really uh, feel like stepping out of the Italian wine section, which you shouldn't, um, there's also tricks for German wine, Spanish, and French. So those are just some keywords. If you like really sweet wines, look for dolce. Most of you know that anyway. So. Or avocado. Or avocado. Or dukes. Is that a if you're French. Did I, did I say that right? No. no. I said that right. What is it? Dukes? No, no. I said dukes. Okay, so here's some examples. Now we're, we're not going to be drinking. We're going to be drinking that first one. The Tignanello is very hard to get. Um, and this one is all the Brunello. But as you can see, the Castellari is the winery name. You also have the vintage, the appellation, county classical, you have the producer name and location, um, and 
you know, kind of here, this is the, you know, alcohol content over here. You also have some bottle information, but uh, not a lot of the wines actually do come with the grape bridal on it. And that's one of the things that it ties to, because they do mix a lot of different grape bridles. So we're actually going to learn about some of the few grape bridles that we have from each region and their grapes that are used. Kind of the profile, okay? So that's something that we're going to go over. So let's move forward to the laws. There are laws in Italy, although they're very flexible. Very flexible laws, if you guys remember the Brunello fiasco. Especially the traffic laws. The traffic? No, there's, yeah. They don't. No, forget it. Right. She's been to Italy before. Yeah. You don't stop at a red light and you get hogs and everything else. No. Yeah. Right. So, should we just get not? Yeah. All right, so, wine laws, real quick. DOCG, Denominazione di Origine Controllata e Garantita. Got it. Okay, say after me. Yes. Got it. <laughs> huh? Got it. Got it? Okay, she's got it. She's good. Got DOC it. is everything except for the Garantita part. And it's a Denominazione di Origine Controllata, IGT, that was just added, the most recently added, not just like yesterday, but Indicazione Geografica Tipica, and then you have the Vino di Tavola, which they're trying to change into just Vino. <laughs> they don't want to say Vino di Tavola anymore, because, so DOCG, there's about 73 DOCGs in Italy. Out of the 73, 45 of them are actually the, the three that we're actually going to cover today. We actually have three DOCGs. Three DOCGs that we're going to be trying today, and three DOCs that we'll be trying today. As far as DOCs, there's 384 of those in Italy. Now, IGTs, a whole bunch more, obviously. 20 regions, lots of wines. And then Vin de Tavola, actually, that's one that is the most. Now, the IGT came up because a lot of the VDTs, if you guys remember the Super Tuscans, Super Tuscans did not go by the law. They said, you know what? Not going to do it. I'm just going to make my own wine. You know what I was going to say. Thank you for stopping. You know what? I am not going to do it. I am just going to make my own wine. I'm going to make it really, really good because I know I've been making wine forever. And I want to make it really, really good. So I'm going to make this wine and I'm not going to follow the rules. Well, they scored so high. Those are wines like Sasakai, Tignanello, who was up there before. All, almost all of them are from the Bulgaria region, and most of them are obviously from Tuscany because it says Super Tuscan. Since then, other companies have actually tried and have actually succeeded in making wines not like Super Tuscans, and now they're called Super Lazio, Super Piedmont, and stuff like that. So we're actually going to go over that a little bit more of Super Tuscans, of what, how I feel that Super Tuscans are, okay? Or why they're called Super Tuscans. So, I, I think, is, it, is this Piedmont now? Okay. Oh, that's Piedmont. Oh All right, so Piemonte. Piemonte. Piemonte means at the foot of the mountains, okay? And Nebbia is actually fall. Now, you're probably wondering, what is this? Nebbia, it's not an Italian wine class, right? But Piemonte, Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo. If you remember Nebbia, which means fog, cue the fog machine. Oh. So, Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo. Now, there's a couple of things they say about Nebbiolo. Nebbiolo came from the word Nebbia. Now, two reasons. One, the grapes, right before they're picked in October, they actually get a little bit velvety, white skin, almost on variation in the skin, okay? Which almost looks like fog. Thank you. Nebbia, that's one. We have lots of reasons of why we do things in Italy. The other one is they say, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's because it comes from the word nobile, which means noble, which that's where it comes from. Uh, I like both. I actually like the fact that this is what it looks like over there, so maybe that has something to do with it. It's all fog. So, going back. Now, you see the three crowns. So, there's three major, four really good wines that come out of Piedmont. Okay? With the most, most of you probably know, is what? Well, you not you. Not you. You, you know. Anybody? From Piedmont. One great wine. The King. Anybody? Ooh. Huh? Ooh. Oh, that's the, you know what? Barolo. Barolo is the King, ladies and gentlemen. Barolo is the King, and it is 100%. Do I want a bottle of wine? You do. No. You get six glasses of wine. And one piece of bread, truffle oil, and even something else. And a bottle of water. I throw that extra. 
Don't, don't worry about the pen. That stays here. Uh, okay, so we're all over the cake. Moving right on. Barbaresco, sir, you had it. The Queen, again, 100%. Nebbiolo. What's the great product? Nebbiolo. I want you to remember. Nebbiolo. So you remember three days from now. Fog. Fog. Nebbiolo. Barolo, Barbaresco, and Gattinara, which is the prince. Okay? Now, I, I know that the Italians are all known about the red wine, so that's why you have six red wines in front of you. But I wanted to make sure that you also like to try a little bit of wine. Okay? So what I did is, I came up with something that, actually they did because they put this thing together. But, the jewel in the crown is the Gala. How about that? How hard is it to remember? The king, the queen, the prince. Barolo, Barbaresco, Gattinara, and you got the jewel of the crown, which is a Gavi. Gavi is 100% Cortese. It is absolutely fantastic. Usually you guys might have heard it as Gavi di Gavi, because it's so good that only one jewel is not enough. You got to have Gavi di Gavi, okay? So, and the one that we're going to try, oof, are we there to try? When? Are you guys thirsty? Yeah! yeah. So, the Gavi, 100% Cortese grape. So, these are the tasty notes, but we're going to make our own tasty notes. So, DOCG 2012, one of three DOCGs out of Pima that are actually white wine. Okay, so is this what we try? QB, are we, are we trying this? We, we're drinking. Okay, we're drinking. Alright, you guys don't drink or go to the back and grab something. So, the Gavi, ladies and gentlemen, I would like for everyone to grab their Gavi. Now, I want to make sure that you guys know, there's going to be a slide that comes out in a couple of minutes. It's going to be about wine is food, food is wine. Okay? So, this Gavi, I decided that we'd go with something that would actually go with both the red and the white. So, in front of you, you have a little piece of bread, and you also have a fantastic white truffle oil. Okay? And you've got a little salt and pepper that you can share if you want. But, I want you guys to try the wine first. Then try the red, and then we're going to go back at the end, and we're going to try it with the food and see if it goes with both of them. I haven't tried it, so I don't know if it works. But both of them are pretty much well foods that actually come from the same region. And I think that Italians, and the way that they make wine, it's all about making sure that they mold. The regions are very small, so if they're going to make the food, they should better make a very good wine that goes with it. So let's drink up. Let's drink up here. Alright, has anybody been to the wine blending class? Fantastic. So what are you guys doing with the wine right now? This is nice. Yeah. But if you've been to the wine blending class, you actually have to chew the wine. So, you, you have to take another sip because the first sip actually coats your mouth. And then the second sip is supposed to be that much more uh, intensive. So, is that a word? I'm in time now. Wow. Wow. What do you guys think? Very different, right? The second flavor. Wow, when I took the second flavor, it's got the right amount of this acidity. It's got a crisp, fruit forward flavor. Um, and so, what else is that? Don't read. What's I got? You're drinking. Serena, what's I got? Tastes lime. Lime. Apple. You guys get apple? Yeah? Pretty good. Don't drink it all, although you have extra over there. Um, you don't want to try with the food. We can get more though, right? So, since we are drinking, and it's power drinking, we've got to move on to the next one. So, here's actually Tenuta La Marquesa. Now, Serena has a great story about the Tenuta La Marquesa. As I mentioned before, all the labels have like a special name that you see on there, okay? Usually the better wines have like a singular name that they want you to remember. Okay, so this one is Tenuta La Marquesa Estate in Piedmont. Now, why is it called La Marquesa, Serena? Well, years Serena, ago. Serena, I'm sorry, yes, I used your name. <laughs> Chuck, years and years ago, as you can see, that beautiful house up on that hill was actually built for a wedding for the bride to be because she did not actually like the house that was there beforehand. <laughs> So on actually the label on the Nagabi, if you can see it on your placemat, oh, that house that house was built just for that wedding because I guess she was a little tired. Yeah, she she had high standards, you know. Yeah. 
so what happened was, it, what happened, she let it slip. She was there getting ready. She goes, man, this house is really my thing. Somebody else heard it. Next thing you know, what happened? They built it just for the wedding. They built it just for her for the wedding and said, you know what? Let's get her something right. Obviously, right in the middle of the thing. Now, what you'll notice is a lot of these timelines actually had a picture of the house right around the grapes and stuff like that. You've got Antinori that does that. You have, obviously, La Marquesa that does that. You have Bonfi that does that. Almost every single one. That's because they're proud about where they make their wine. They're proud about their product that they give to you. So, that's pretty much the grounds right there. And then the other wine that we're going to try is the Barbara Dasti. Now, the Barbara Dasti is the, it's also a DOCG. It is the mostly found grown, grown grape. It's Barbera that's used to make this wine. And it's in Nasti, in Osta, and it's pretty much grown everywhere. Now, the Barbara Dasti is a DOCG because it's from a certain area. As you can see again, same thing. There's the house. House. It's a little house. It's a little house, yeah. <laughs> The Marquesa didn't go to that house. Maybe that's the house before the Marquesa. I don't know. But so there it is, and they, again they put it on there. And so why don't we try that wine and see what we think? Now these Barbera Dastis and Barberas, those are the type of wines that really are small gems. Something you're gonna find in the store that's not really that expensive that you can grab a lot of. Okay. So where is it over here? From Pima. Here we go. Piemonte. Piemonte. Piem I, I don't know. Well, you want me to call it Piemonte for the rest of the day? Or you Piemonte. Okay, that's it. Where's my translator? From now on, I'm only speaking in Italian. Chose got you. Chose got me? Yeah. Ciao. You can't even say her name. Did you guys chew it? Did you guys chew the wine? So much stronger than when you chew it. This is so, so much more. All right, so now we have to do this. There's a remote thing. Now, wine is food, food is wine. The white truffles from Pima, also some rice. They've got cheese and salami. Now, everybody, every region, every single part of Italy, they all make salami. Everyone. And cheese. So, you have salami, you have cheese in front of you. But those are all from different regions. I've got a whole bunch of salami and cheese over here. Salami, cheeses, all from different regions. These are actually look a little low. One is from Calabria, one is from Toscana, I got one from Naples. Here they go here in Napoli. And then this one is from New Jersey. <laughs> Alright, I just want to say it. It does say New Jersey on it. Okay, so it is from New Jersey. So um, Let's try both of those again, and let's try it with the truffle oil. Are you guys, are you guys willing to give it a shot? Yeah. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that tastes like because I don't have it. So, you tell me what you think. Tell me if it goes. Try it with one, and then make sure you clear your palate with the water, and then try it with the others. And tell me if it goes well with both. You know, everybody's palate is different. I did try it. I thought that it went well. Uh, both Serena and Anja did, and the front row, and the second row, and the third row all said that it was fantastic. Wow. So, if you guys don't like it back there, you're disagreeing with a lot of people, mm -hmm. so you know. <laughs> that truffle oil is outstanding. I had to tone that down, by the way. You did. Chef got upset with me because straight truffle oil oh, would just knock you down. Really? So I did mix a little bit of olive oil in that. Oh really? Yeah, I did. I had to. It's very How did you get all that? It is so potent, yes. potent, powerful yes. that. It really knocks you off your feet. So you're trying it with both? What do you think, sir? You, you're not going on the red. What do you think? It's pretty good, right? With both or just one? Okay, with both. But I think it's really interesting to taste it with the Nata first. Yeah. And then you taste it with the Barbera. And it really brings out it's just a different flavor profile. But it goes very well together. So, did everybody get a chance to try it? What did you think? Good? Good? Raise your hand if you thought it was good. Together? 90% of you thought it was good. Oh, we got a so-so over there in the blue. A little young. Yeah? Which one? The red or the white? I just don't think you drank enough, sir. That's probably I think that gentleman over there needs more wine. 
Alright. Well, I'm not, you know what, think of being honest. Honestly, nobody, no one's palate is the same. Right. You know, you kind of have to practice it. There was a long time ago, I think like two years, that I didn't like fish, and now I eat fish. So, we move along to Tus Tuscany. Alright. The next, the white part of your Italian flag, Tuscany. Tuscany. Boom. Another house in the middle of the vineyards. Oh, you know what I forgot to tell you about Barolo Barbaresco? And this is my first time teaching an Italian wine class, by the way, so don't worry. I already filled out your comment cards. So you got to put your signature, okay? So don't worry about it. But the one thing about the Italian wines, it's, you know, I was like, man, I, I gotta, gotta say this. So, the Barolo Barbaresco Cantinara, the king, the queen, and the prince, right? So, they grow on these hills. So, you've got, you've got hills like this, right? So, uh, the way I remember is that Barolo is the east, like this. Right, they all grow on this side. Then the Barbaresco grows on the other side, so they get a different type of view from, you know, the side and different kind of, and then in the center, the Cantinara. And just south of that, you have the Gabi that actually goes in the same area. So I was going to say that before, but I wanted you guys to drink because I really care about all of you. So, so now that you think we can move on to Tuscany. So in Tuscany, the man, another king, look at that. Every province of Italy has kings. Pretenders to the throne. The king, San Giovese. Love it. Love it. Now, it says it's a king here, but you guys all know that there are very, a lot of pretenders, right? They've taken the Sancho Mese grape and they've actually made it and cloned it and created all kinds of different Sancho Mese. You have the Sancho Mese Grosso that they use to make Brunello. Brunello di Montalcina, 100% Sancho Mese Grosso. You also have Brugnolo Gentile. We have a bottle of, what's that bottle that you do by the glass? That's Brunello Gentile, 100%. Montepulciano. And then we also have Morellino. So, all clones, and as I mentioned, there's probably more in the works. Uh, they're always doing, you know, draft, tra uh, drafting vines and creating new things and really experimenting with grapes. Um, so, obviously, what are they based on for? Tuscany. Chianti, 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 right? Chianti, Chianti Classico, Chianti Classico Reserva, Chianti Classico Reserva Single Vineyard, right? So here's the best way to remember Chianti, okay? It actually goes up this way. Chianti is probably, it's, it's still a new seed, but it's probably the one of the least, uh, what's the word? Quality? Least, they're all great wines, don't get me wrong. But if you were to put them next to each other, you always have a really good one, and you have some that is not considered as good. So you start with the Chianti, then you move to the Chianti Classico, then you have the Chianti Classico Single Vineyard. I'm sorry, then you have the Chianti Classico Reserva, which actually says on the bottle, and then the Single Vineyard. Now usually the Single Vineyard would have Chianti Classico Reserva written on it, and then they have a fantastic name of something that it's somebody saw on their vineyard. But look at the tree. Il Poggio. Look at the rock, La Roccia. You know? The, look at the bridge. Oh, Il Ponte. Look at the bird over there. That is a woodpecker. I'm going to call my wine Il Picchio. Trust me. It's that specific to the area. It really is. It means that, honestly, if this was my vineyard and there was a bird in the middle of it, that's it. That's, I'm going to call it whatever bird was in there. And it's going to be, and all the grapes that I'm making are all from this little area here. So it does, it, it sounds funny, and it is funny. It is funny. But I got to tell you, it's so much better, because you got one guy that's got, it's just a smaller area, they're making this wine, and they're making fantastic wine. So, yeah, you know what? The County Classical Reserve is in the vineyard, it's still a DOCG wine. They have to go by the laws, but they took, take a lot of care in making this wine as good as it could possibly be. So, really, really good stuff. And there's a name again, Super Tuscans. Mm -hmm. So, by what I've learned through my boss who was here just a few minutes ago, is teaching the Bordeaux blending class, a Super Tuscan wine is a wine that uses grapes that are not indigenous to the country of Italy. So, Cabernet, 
100% Cabernet, and it's being used, and they do have it, 100% Cabernet, you can consider that a Super Tuscan, even if it doesn't have any Italian grapes in it, as long as it comes from Italy. So they're growing Cabernet, they're making wine, and they're making it in Tuscany, they call it a Super Tuscan. A blend of Sangiovese and Merlot, for example. They blend those two together, they make it in Italy, and they can call it, in Tuscany, Italy, and they call it a Super Tuscan. That's why if they're making a Merlot in Lazio, for example, they can call that a Super Lazio. Because that's pretty much what it is. It's when you use a grape that really was not supposed to be there, and it just happened to go there because people started hearing about Cabernets and Merlots and things of that nature from either France or California, and they said, you know what, I want to bring it over here and see how the weather here affects those grapes. So it's really cool. Super Tuscan is that. And a Sasakaya, a Solaya. I mean, a Solaya, for example, is a blend of Sangiovese Cat. A Sasakaya is a blend of Cab Merlot. A Tignanello is Cab Merlot. So some of them are not even using Italian grapes anymore. They're just saying, you know what, I'm just going to plant Cabernet here. It grows really well. I'm going to mix it with something else. I'm going to call it a Super Tuscan. I'm not even going to have to pay anybody for the SCG. And I can charge a buck ton because it's that good. And if you guys want to come to El Molino and order any one of those wines, I'd be more than happy to open it for you. Awesome. On the house, right? I yeah, she forgot to tell you. <laughs> we'll be for a special oh, yeah. price of whatever it's on the menu. We have a special limitation. All right. So, obviously, the I like Italian it. white wines that are not on here from Tuscany that you will not try is the Pinot Grigio. Oh. Most commonly known. Also from Emilia Romagna right next door. The province right next door. But we're actually going to try the Castellare. Sangiovese. Now, Castellare, if you want to go ahead and taste it, I'll just talk while you're tasting so you're not stopping. Um, the Castellare wine is actually one of the few houses that still uses the oldest possible grape varietals that are used to make Chianti. So they said, you know what? Forget about Cabernet, I'm not blending that with mine even though I'm allowed to by DOCG law. I said, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to just make it the old school way. I'm going to stick with the way that I know how to do it. So they use Sangioveto. They don't even call it Sangiovese. They said it's so old school because Sangioveto became Sangiovese. But in this area, they want to call it Sangioveto still. <coughs> but it is Sangiovese. It's the same thing. They just call it that in their little area. And they actually add a little bit of Colorino, which is one of the three grape varietals that are used to add to Chianti back like 150 years ago. So, did you guys, 5%, she said 5%. You guys try it? It's very tart. It's tart, right? And it's been open for a little bit, too. Now, Chianti is one of those wines that you really have to try with food, and a lot of Italian wines are like that, so that's why they're going to have that strong flavor. So, you got to try it before. Now, every single one in Castellari, as you can see, is, they put a picture of a bird, a different bird from, uh, from the actual... I think they had like I think they, they try to save the the uh, on every for yeah there you go she knows just for Castellar, what they do is they put a different endangered or rare bird on their label so we just want to show you you're not trying the 2008 but as you can see it's a different bird on this label as to what you are trying today yeah. so they're trying to you know they're they're doing good at the same time they're raising environmental awareness at the same time their wine is really freaking good. <laughs> Yeah, see that bird over there is called the Peace Pola. And, the, and this one, I'm just reading what it says. And then on this one is called the Tordo Sacerdo. So, I don't know what they really are in English. But they're in Hendry, that's why there's not that many. They're not here, they're only over there. Okay, so the other, oh, Castellar. Now, funny story about Tuscany. This looks like a rooster, right? Have you ever wondered, has anybody ever seen that rooster in every single county bottle? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, not every one, but most of them have, right? This one over here has it. Does, it. does anybody know why that's there? I didn't know until I knew I had to teach this class, so I actually had to learn it. So I'm going to tell you, there's like two different traditions, but I only like this one. <laughs> so, we have the black rooster. The black rooster is actually in Siena and Florence? Florence. In Siena and Florence, the family, the, well, the people from each country said, you know what, Chianti is mine. And the other say said, no, Chianti is mine. Because they were fighting over the boundaries of Chianti, pretty much, right? So they said, you know what, there's only one fair way to do this. So the guys from Siena said, okay, we're at the break of dawn when the rooster crows. We're going to send our horsemen 
to walk, go as fast as it can towards you, and you do the same from over there on this time, and wherever they meet, that'll be the line. And one is Siena, and the rest is Florence, okay? So that's what they said. But they said that Florence cheated, because they're Italian. <laughs> and, what I, and they even said that they got help from a great Italian, like Leonardo da Vinci, invented this thing that, I don't know what happened, out of the moon, was shining on the bird, I don't know, but the bird crowed way earlier than the other one, so Florence actually has more space than Siena does. That's what I've heard the story, that's what I read the story is, and I thought it was kind of cool. But they did say it was also Leonardo da Vinci, who was the one who actually caused all of that. So, it's kind of interesting, but that's what the rooster there. The other rooster story I was told, and it's not that interesting, so I'm not going to Plus, I don't remember it, so. Alright, but you guys get to try something really cool. You guys do get to try the Sondaya, which is a super Tuscan. Now, on the, in an homage to my boss, the Bordeaux Blending King, this is actually a Bordeaux Blend type of wine. It's a Cap Sauvignon, it's a Merlot and a Cap Franc. Crazy stuff, right? Cap Franc, the father of Cap Sauvignon. But please, grab your glass. It's the one on top in the middle. It is a 2009. It is from Bulgaria. That's where Sasakai and Tignanello and, and the best Super Tuscans come from. It only cost me about $250 a bottle, so don't worry about it. The bill is in front. Get a bottle. The way out. Get a bottle. Get a bottle. I told you it wasn't from New York, right? That's right. Yeah, but I'm not That's why I said that before I start the class, because everybody's like, oh, it's New York. What do you guys think? Yeah. Now that one is good, and that one is actually a food one as well. It does have a lot of cake. I actually want to try that now. Hey, you guys need to try too, Angela. Said, hey, now tomorrow we gotta do this again, okay? No, I like that. So this is more of what the American palate a little bit, right? Obviously, cat, cap sauvignon. You can tell the cabernet right away. If you if you tilt it against the white. You can say, you know what, you got a little bit of a clear coat where if you look at the county, it's more of a, 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 a rusty color, right? That's why they say most of the time wines are old world wines, you can see by the rust that you see at the end. But, man, that is really good. So, again, wine is food. There's some guy right here, again, a house in the middle of the, of the vineyards. And you said this one ran how much long? Oh, this one? No, it was not it, no, roughly this one here. I actually got this one, and it's not on any of our wine list. But you probably will find this one around seventy-five to like eighty dollars on a wine list. Almost the same as like a, a, a Gaia Promise, that kind of price range. So it's about it's about twenty-five retail, probably thirty-five on like total wine, and then obviously the big markup for the restaurant. Oh yeah. So very good. I'm gonna keep this one in my hand. So food is wine, wine is food. It's really good. And we're going to try that with the specialty, the specialità from Tuscany, which is the caprese, tomato mozzarella and basil, the Italian flag, as you can say. Now they also, guess what they make? Guess what they make in Tuscany? You'll never believe it. Salami. You're right, sir. They make salami. You believe it? Salami and cheese. Now, the one thing that also Tuscan is known for is obviously their beef. It's incredibly good. Mm -hmm. Gamey food. So, try it, with the, try it with that. Tell me what you think. It might be, it might, remember, it might be a little bit on the, on the stronger side with the tomato and mozzarella. Um, usually you throw a little bit of vinegar on there, but that kind of takes away from the wine. So, it, the, benefit, the wine itself is supposed to be the vinegar, per se. I'm just gonna eat the New Jersey salami over here. I'm just gonna eat that. I'm just gonna eat that. Okay. So how was it? What'd you think? Was that a better pairing, sir? Great Perfect, right? Good, good, excellent. Oh, I love when a plane comes together. That's also something that my boss says. How's the how's the how's it good? You enjoying it? Fantastic. Alright, what's important is that everybody's having fun. Okay, so if at any time someone's not having fun, please just drink more. Drink more. <laughs> or, or ask her what you should do, because she's just tell you. Not hard. 
All right, so moving right along. Did everybody get a chance to try it? Yeah. Yeah. I can move to the next one. How are we in time? Angel? I've got 20 minutes left. Maybe you stay for like Oh, yeah. 5.06. Huh? I've got 24 minutes. So I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you do Fantastic. Am I doing good? Yeah. yeah. As I said, I already filled out your cards. You don't have to be nice. You just sign off on your way out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. So next is Veneto. Oh, oh, there's Christian. That is me back when I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> I've been shrinking since. I'm sorry. So I was born in Naples. So where the best pizza is, where the worst drivers are. And I lived until I was 12 years old. My mom, my grandmother, seeing that we have a little bit of time, my grandmother, I grew up with my grandmother, and we used to have, we had a house on the fourth floor, which, because it's an old building, it's like the 25th floor here. You know, this big, tall ceiling, right? And then on top of that, they had this metal staircase that went up another 20 to 30 feet above the, that building. And from there, I could see the Vesuvio from my house. It was really cool, one of the tallest buildings. And absolutely gorgeous. When I was there, it was beautiful before the whole trash thing and yeah. mess thing and everything else, uh, which I got to experience later, probably about three, four years ago. But, uh, you know, it's the one thing is whenever the soccer team's doing good, because I'm a big soccer fan, the city is beautiful. If the soccer team's not doing well, the city just kind of starts stepping down. I don't know what it is, but Napoli, I'm not even a fan of Napoli, but my cousin is, so I kind of got to, you know, feel for him. But, um, it's a, they're doing really well this year, so if you're going to visit, Napoli is actually not that bad right now. Um, so going back to Veneto. Veneto, obviously Venice. That's kind of how you remember it. Um, Veneto wines. Okay, this is where get, this is where the class gets difficult. Okay. We have Nebbiolo, which was easy, right? Nebbia, Fog, Nebbiolo. Sangiovese, everybody automatically knows. Who knows the great bottles in Veneto? Anybody? Who said it? Somebody said it. I heard it. What was it? What was the question? The great varietals in Veneto. Yes, those are the wines, but it took me a while. Well, it didn't take me a while. I speak in time, so. But the Corvina, Rondinella, and Molinara. But it took me a while to remember those three. I remember when I first applied for a position as a server and I trained. Uh, that was with Tony, he was one of the managers there. But I used to try, I studied with this guy named Luigi. He was in Italian. Uh, but, he was from New York. Yeah, he was from New York, exactly. But the, the two of us, this is how we remember the great part. It's funny, this, we made a song. Okay, does anybody here speak Italian? Then you're good. Yeah, she does, that's okay. Then I'm good, I can tell you what the song is. Okay, so, the song goes, Corvina Rondinella Bolinara Che mazzo fai? Che mazzo fai? Okay? okay? I only said it once for the video camera, so you're gonna have to practice it all. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it again, I'm not gonna expect you to. Okay? So, Amarone, the great bitter. Yes, extremely bitter wine. Lots of alcohol. Now, the reason why it has lots of alcohol is because they actually take the grapes and they dry them on straw mats. Now, don't ask these two ladies, because they actually looked a video now of how they dry the grapes, and it's no longer on straw mats. Well, some of them, now they have dry backs and like these buildings where like, just everything is made. Modern. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. I'm Italian, I don't speak English. Um, but yeah, modernized, thank you. Uh, so it kind of takes away from that, but some of the houses still do that. They put them on straw mats, they dry them by the sun, and what happens is, and one of the reasons why the wine is so expensive, is because when you crush a dry grape, you get less juice. Unbelievable. <laughs> so they got to use a lot more grapes to make one bottle of wine compared to using a non-dry grape. Crazy. Now, the dryness of the grape, though, what it does is it elevates the sugars in that wine. And the sugar does what? Turns into alcohol when they're creating the wine. And obviously, the reason why they have such higher amounts of alcohol compared to others. So, Amarone, the great bitter, probably the best known 
Amarone is the Bertana, one of the oldest houses of Amarone. But the one you're trying today from Veneto is Zenato. Zenato also makes an Amarone. And it's fantastic. You can find that at El Molino. It's very, very good. But the reason why I say Zenato and why I pick Zenato is because they also make a Babolicella, which is again a grip bridle blend of the three. And they use the Ripasso system, so they also have a Ripasso. They are so good at their wine that they said, I'm not going to call it Ripasso. I'm going to invent my own, and they actually did. They invented the Ripassa. <laughs> the Ripassa is from Sergio Zenato, who actually said, this word is mine. That's why everything after him was called Ripasso. He actually first started the Ripassa method. And that's why I thought it'd be cool for you guys to try it, because I want you guys to kind of get the old school mentality of how Italians make their wine. Um, so, ripasso is what they use now. Zenato gets to say ripasso. And I challenge you to find any grip bridle from Italy that says ripasso like Zenato does, because if not, they paid a lot of money to Sergio, well, his family. Because uh, he's no longer right. Um, so, Again, grapes, dried out of straw mats, produce concentrated flavors and yields and high alcohol, alcohol content. Now, what the ripasa is, is what they do is they take the grapes, the ones that are already sun-dried, and they press them and they make the wine. Then they say, okay, well, what am I going to do with all this leftover, right? So they take the actual grapes, they don't sun-dry them, they throw them on top of that, and they run them through again, meaning the ripasa. And then the Valpo di Cella is just the regular one. They say, you know what, it doesn't have to be Ripasso, we're just going to take the grapes, they're of good quality, put them in there, and make the wine. So, there's the three. Okay? Anybody have any questions? No. So, the Zenato Valpo di Cella Superiore. It's a superior Valpo di Cella. That is in front of you, directly in front of you, uh, on the red side of the Italian flag. So, I'm going to give that a shot. You guys don't get to drink, I don't understand. I'm having so much fun with this. I drank. You drank back there already? We just, yeah, you guys. Sneaking wine back there. <laughs> wow. You guys chewing it? So it wouldn't have stayed by the time I got to done. So we would have to have started. Then I'd have to make you mats. And, you know, yeah, yeah. Didn't want to be there. So I actually brought one thing they only make in Veneto. Salami. <laughs> Venetian salami. Venetian salami. So that's over here. What's that called? Cortecino. Cortecino. It's got its own name. It's not even salami anymore. It looks like it's going to be food. Cotocino. 
Now you gotta try both with the cappuccino. Now obviously the wines are both very similar to each other. So, but. <laughs> I like Salute. the harder song. Salute everybody. Salute. 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 That was extremely well, huh? Really good. Love I like this one right here. I find this one too. Again, it's a different blend when you put them together. It really is, but it still goes extremely well. This was an easy slam dunk. I mean, the wines are very similar, but it did, it goes well. I think I got a piece of pepper in one. Wow. So what'd you think? Good? Very good? What'd you think? You like the Valpolicella better than the Ripasso? I do too. You do too? The first one? Wow. Raise your hand if you like the Valpolicella Bella del Ripasso. Fantastic. That's great. That is great. So you guys know what it is. So you probably wouldn't like an Amarone then. Because what happens is the Valpolicella, the big bitter, tends to get the flavors from the sun-dried cakes and the alcohol content go up. So keep that in mind. So you wouldn't want to order an Amarone. And if you do, you want the Amarone to be open for a while. Okay? Alright, so some of the food, yes. Oh, the very minimal. So the young lady here was telling was asking me about the difference in pricing between the two. Um, Angela. I'm sorry, I mean to bother you from talking. Um, truffle uh, are, you, are you saying that truffle oil goes with everything? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So the question on the floor, the question on the floor is, is Zenato Ribassa a lot more expensive than the Valpolicella Superiore? And actually, it is not that much more expensive. As a matter of fact, we do sell it by the glass in the Molino, the Valpolicella. So when usually when you see a wine by the glass, it's not a wine that is extremely expensive. Right. Yeah. So you might as well get a bottle. I think it's fifty-seven dollars for a bottle. Possibly in a restaurant, which is not that bad, right? Sixty something. Okay, fifty-seven today. You go to a Molino, you get a bottle of fifty-seven dollars today. Because I don't like to be wrong. I am Italian. I'm never wrong. But we're on the house. Remember. All right. I feel like I'm losing the class. Okay, so. That usually happens after six glasses of wine. So, Benedo, of, of course, the polenta that I mentioned, the cheeses, Monte Veronese. You know what? That actually, I found out when I was researching for this class, because I don't know anything about Italian wine. Uh, tiramisu actually came from Benedo. So, I actually tried the tiramisu with the Amarone. Tasted awful. So, that's why it's not in front of you. How much time do we have? Alright, like, so I got 10 minutes and I'm on the last slide. I don't know how I did this. That's mm -hmm. So that means we got 10 minutes to like just chat and right. test the two of them. So if you have questions, you want to drink for 10 minutes? I'm sorry, what is my favorite wine? Okay, here or in general? Here. Well, here's fine, but I do want to know in general. Okay, so in general, I like, I like, believe it or not, I do like a lot of California wines. I like wines where I don't have to eat food with it. Yes. Okay, I eat a lot of food. You can see that, right? So, I really, honestly. So, I'd rather have a wine and enjoy myself. And then, so I like the, the, the blends just because it, it can really focus on the different flavors and you, your palate kind of gets to, and if you've been to the wine blending class, you know that your force taste buds, you know, so I like it to where it hits all of them and it feels extremely smooth, okay? So a Meritage I enjoy from California, if I were to have an Italian wine, I think that everybody should remember this because I enjoy a Montepulciano di Abruzzo. 
Okay? That is about $2.50 a total wine, and it is absolutely one of the best wines you'll ever try. It's called Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, from Abruzzo region of Italy. And one that's really good is called La Spada. It means the sword. Somebody must have stuck a sword in the middle of the vineyard, and that's why they call it the Spada. Okay. Now, I know that all of you, if, is there any other questions? Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, sir. I was from Newark, where you were from, actually. I was in Sorrento. Okay. And I was talking to a real old guy over there who was like one of these wine connoisseurs. Uh huh. And he said to me, a good guidance on a good bottle of wine is the deeper the pumps, the better the wine. If you can put your thumb up and lose it, that's a real good bottle of wine. Okay, oh, so you're talking about, you're talking about the bottle? Yeah. And if you can put your finger in it? If you can bury your thumb in it. No, it's a really good yes. Yes. I don't know exactly I, I, well, I mean, it used to be true. How old was this gentleman? It's probably in his late 80s. Okay. So it used to be true, and the reason why is because some of the older wines, okay, that they know there it's a good quality and it's meant to sit for a while, tend to do what? What do you do with a bottle of wine when it's an older vintage? Decant. You decant it. Why do we decant it? Sediment. Sediment. I love sediment. I don't decant anything because I want I want to chew on my wine. Okay? But yes, you decant it. So what happens is the reason why it's deeper is because they know it's going to create those, it's not going to be blended into the wine, it's going to create, it's going to go over the edge, so it's all going to be on the bottom. So when you decant it, I don't even know if that's true, I just made that up, but hey, it sounded good, right? I'm, I'm not from New York. So but yeah, that, I, I honestly, I think that that is the reason why. But yeah, that that's that does make sense. And uh, um, but yeah, some of the older ones. So you're absolutely right. If you're getting a bottle of wine and it has a D. So when I go buy a bottle of wine, I go with that. Oh yeah, and you know what? You can never go wrong. But if you do that all the time, you're only getting expensive bottles of wine. So so yeah. So try the Montepulciano Abruzzo and see if you like it. And look, everybody's palate is different. Everyone's palate is different. If you try different wines and you taste it and you like it, buy a lot of it. Buy a lot of it, especially when it's, look, I'm, they have been called cheap a million times. So, trust me, I just go get a bottle of wine that I like and I keep a few bottles. So, one last thing, unless there's another question. Okay. No, it's okay. How do you choose your wines for your different restaurants? Okay, how do I choose the wine? Okay, well, obviously, uh, when it comes to wines, and, and it's, it's a great question, because we actually on property here, we have, I'm the director of restaurants, I don't know if, if, if uh, I'm just saying that because I, I, I wanted to let you know that I kind of looked at all the wine lists, right? Uh, but like Shula's, Il Molino, and, and Blue Zoo, which are three very different restaurants, all three of them got wine spectator awards for their wine lists. So the way that we choose the wine list that I actually opened in Molino is their GM when I first started working here. And uh, I actually got to try all the different wines and put them on the list. But it does have to do with a range. Obviously you want a lot of ranges. I like the fact that there's 20 regions out of Italy and I would like I tried to have as many out of the, all 20. Something that you might not try that is important for someone to kind of challenge someone's flavors with. Uh, I don't want to just like to focus on one area and leave it at that. I want everybody to be able to say, hey, try something. And, you know, I believe this. If you want to try something and not convince you to try it and you don't like it, you know what? Give it back to me. I'll drink it later at the end of the night. And, and you get another bottle that you want. Okay? But, I like that. It's like, yeah, I did that all the time. You know, and I became director of restaurants. So, yeah, here you go. Um, but honestly, um, you look at pricing. You don't want to go everything up the top notch. You do want those, you know, those name recognitions as well. So when you're making a wine list, there's all kinds of different things you're kind of thinking about. You want to get Amarones, but you also want somebody, an Amarone that people can go out and purchase. Like we have the Luigi Righetti Amarone that's very affordable. Now if you go to a Zenato Amarone, the Luigi Righetti, for example, is $60. Now the reason why is because they create a lot more wine and they have a lot more land. But a Zenato Amarone, it's $140 a bottle, but you know, you may not, and they're very different from each other because they make it. Okay? So, I'm going to go over one last thing because I don't know how much time I have left. Five minutes. Five minutes. So, I'm going over the 
Difference in wine glass. Yeah. My boss does this in his class, and I'm just telling you, I am telling you the swan and dolphin way. I am not telling you the actual, I'm not, yeah, not hashtag Christian knows all, okay? It's just a swan and dolphin rule. So if at any time, anyone, and you're having dinner here, they, and you order a good bottle of either of wine, okay? And then after I tell you why, because, and they bring you the wrong glass, call me. Okay. <laughs> Email me. Is one eight four seven? It really is. Right? <laughs> so, very simple. All bottles of wine with a very slim look, like this one. Okay, that's like Cabernets, Pinot Noirs, and things like that. Okay, here on property, if you get a bottle of wine like this, you're going to get a glass that matches the look. Oh, is that chic? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela. So there you have it. <laughs> yeah, okay, and the other, the fat bottom, gets the fat glass. Now, we all know a lot of white wines have a bottle like this, right? Chardonnays. They also have, like, Sauvignon Blancs, for example. Okay, now, Champagne is completely different, okay? Don't start throwing that around. I heard somebody say, what about Champagne? Okay, okay, you know what? If you want to stay with this one off and we'll grab one of these glasses and add a glass of champagne. This one, by the way, holds the entire glass of champagne. <laughs> so, are you, I'm going with this glass. That's what I'm going with. Yes. Okay. What glass do you get when it comes in a box? When it comes in a box. This is buttery bottom glass. Right? You can find this a pottery bar. This is. That's a burgundy. Hold on. Sir? No, wait. No, no. No, it's Schatz Wiesel. Oh, okay. Which, if you go to pottery bar, they actually have Schatz Wiesel. They do. So, where was I? No, take no, get my boss back. Alright, well, hey, I forgot. I've got some wine. sign it for you, absolutely. So, you, okay, let's put these outside. You, just circle all the good stuff, okay? It's up. Serena's gonna take it to the backyard. Actually, they'll pass it around. Here we go. I'm confused, I've never done this before. But, so, going back to my player. All right, so getting my boss back, are we ready? All right, so in order to know that we made a successful and enjoyable class, okay, do we have a successful and enjoyable time? This is where we're going next. Woo! Yeah. This is the causeway. And, and I'm a big Italian soccer fan, you know, right? So we're going to sing a song. And I want you to sing that song either on the way out there, on the causeway, whatever. To get together, old hands, I don't care. Angel was going to get flags for everybody. She messed it all up. Oh. Oh. They were too expensive. I'm kidding. That's why we put it on the map. Uh, but... These are the words to the song. Okay, no, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not Italian. I know you can say ole all kinds of different ways because all you're saying is one word, but this is the way I want you to hear it. These are not the bottom. This is the way we do it, right? This is not one stop.
a soccer team, we actually throw other words in there, just so you know. Yes. I know those words. Yes. And it's, well, it's not they're bad. It's not like that. Like, it's sort of weird. It's not even a word. That's not a word. So, we actually say, ole, 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 Italia, ole. So you can throw anything in there. So you can say, Italian wine, ole. You can say whatever you want. But make sure that I that you go that way. You gotta go this way because this class is over. All right. It usually runs about 50 minutes We're gonna crash. longer. Yeah. Crash. But he will hear you on the causeway. You see, you saw him. He introduced himself. Yeah. Just when you see him go, ole, 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 ole. Every single one, he's just a little quiet. You don't even have to go all together. But you know what? You'll know. You came to this class and you had a good time. Yeah. And that's all. You to do. So All hopefully right. I've succeeded. Hopefully you enjoy the presentation. You enjoyed that time. Thank you. Thank you all for your share. So with that said, if you got tickets to the causeway, go out there and drink your butts off. Okay? Now, one thing my grandmother always told me. Okay? A day without wine is a day without sunshine. So drink up, have fun, have a good time, and thank you very much for coming to my class.